So oil. Let's oil. Go, let's get in the oil market. Let's do it, man. So it is Wednesday. We get the crude oil numbers as if we don't have enough going on today. Uh, we get crude numbers, 10.30 a.m. It's 10.21 right now, so we got about eight, no, eight minutes until we get those inventory numbers. Crude, a little bit of volatility today. You back things up to yesterday. We made it up to a high of 59.50. We talked about how the Saudi Aramco deal, uh, they get a pop on the open. The largest market value of a company, I think it's 1.8 now, it's up to yeah. trillion dollars. Uh, you won't see any of those insiders selling anytime soon unless they want to knock on the door from the Saudi police. Yeah, uh, MB1, right? Oh, right. Uh, so we'll MBS, get it. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, crude oil, we're looking at the January contract. We're trading at 59.15 right now. Jumping to, let's see where the 11 AMs line up for expirations. Would have. Exposure from $59 if we want, not a, not a bad price point in terms of about 15 cents in the money to the bullish side. If you want to set up a volatility trade, this would be your bullish spread, 59 to 60.50. And it's kind of cool if you were just bullish, not a bad trade, man. You're paying about eight pennies in premium. The contract's at 59.15, yeah. you're buying at 59.23, and you're capped at losses at 59. And you got to keep in mind here that this is with the inventory number dropping at 10.30. Uh, with upward exposure right. all the way to 6050. The bearish side of that, you're going to be a little bit out of the money, so you're going to be paying a little bit more premium, as in you're paying 15 plus the nine cents, so you're paying 24 cents on the bearish side. So, and I say paying 24, right? You're paying nine, but you're 24 cents away from exactly. the market. And so you're looking and at... If you're bearish, that's still not bad. That, no. That's, it's only costing you nine bucks, right? It is. Oh it is. God. Now you got 24 pennies to, yeah. before you get to break even, right? right? Um, but pretty cool how that well, lines up. When you look up. at that chart, it was no. 24 pennies like six hours ago. Yes, and yeah. again, you got the numbers coming at 10.30 right now. Let's just see where the noons line up. So a little bit different price point, which is nice here. So on the 11 a.m. spread, you had a little bit of a bullish bias potentially because you were 15 cents in the money to the bullish side. You can set up a real similar trade on the bearish side, though, because 59.25 becomes your pivot point. So this time, you would be buying the bullish spread, but this time you're out of the money on the bullish side, so that gets yeah. a little bit cheaper, but you got to make up that room in terms of you're buying at 59.41, the market's at 59.14, you're paying 16 bucks on that bullish spread trade, and the bearish one is the one that now has your intrinsic value. Not a bad bearish trade if you really want to, you're selling it at 59, call it, yep. market's at 59.15, right. you're capped out at 59.25. I like those trades, and this one goes till noon too, right? right? So I like those trades when you're getting an inventory number, oh, yeah. you're capped at, at relatively affordable losses, and you have a buck fifty in terms of potential. And let's just see. Uh, so the number we're looking for, crude oil inventories, they're looking for a decline. And I'm going to put it in because okay. we got 15 seconds. We're going to add that negative number, 2250. We're going to split the difference between the median analyst estimate of a bond decline of 3 million barrels, okay. and the whisper number, a little bit weaker than that, a decline of 1.5. And before we jump around, interesting draw on crude yeah. and gasoline looking for a surplus of anywhere between about 2.5 million and 3.3 million barrels. Okay, so CL active contract. Let's see what we got here. Yep. So yeah, been having a hard time with the 60 bucks, but it's still over the... At 58.74 level. Oh, look at this. This doesn't say a thing. And that was the OPEC news that we had on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Saudis cutting even additional, and surprise, surprise, ahead of the initial IPO for Saudi Aramco. But it's held up there. It has held. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we'll see how it shakes out. It, yeah. it, it, it almost looks like it does want to spike up there. I mean, it's been up there four days. It's been right hanging now. for a while. Yeah. It has. It's been up there four and, days. And um, so. you got to know there's a trading desk somewhere in Saudi Arabia that's going to be buying oil if that thing begins to plummet. Oh, yeah. At least for the foreseeable future. No doubt. Yeah. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down 12, Nasdaq up 22, S&P's up three and a half, and we uh, we got a rise of what 822,000. We sure do. So API had a rise last night too. They were talking about in that in the den and crude oil inventories rising. Expectation had been for a decline. Gas inventories rising much more than they had expected. 5.4 million oh barrels. God. So with that in mind, let's jump back to the charts, see where we're trading at, and we got. Quite a drop, man. Look at that. As you'd expect, right? Market was looking for a decrease in stockpiles. You actually get an increase. And this is where you talk about, man, if you're going bullish, 
you're capped out at $59 right. for those trades we were looking at. You know, right away, you don't even have a chance to get out if you're trading this in the futures market as that flips down in a, right. in a heartbeat to 58.88. And uh, if you looked at the bearish side, not a bad trade. We were getting in at 59. 25 that would have been our bearish side of the contract already you would have 46 dollars of value on the bearish one uh with that acceleration to the downside so 60 dollars maybe just not yet man and the price accrued yeah uh that, with that, a build of about 800 thousand barrels yeah yeah it's because uh, you say 58 79 see that's the number yeah. that we just went over for four days but guess what it's it's a number that Oof. and you, you back it up i mean we just i mean this level we read out early this morning on two occasions. We're under that now. And, um, you know, you're all the way back to Tuesday action in a heartbeat. Yeah. Lots of energy out here. In fact, here, yeah, well, let, let's go to CVX, uh, the Chevron. So check this out. This is pretty intense, man. So Chevron is down 70 cents. Now, $11 billion. Is that a lot? Yeah. Now, this is a write down, folks, okay? Um, that Chevron basically said, hey, listen, I don't think our assets are going to come back to those levels again. Yeah. Um, they expect to write down $11 billion in the fourth quarter, more than half of its uh, Appalachian natural gas yeah. assets after the slump in prices. More than half of it from the from, Appalachian yeah. um, natural gas assets. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty, $11 billion. $11 so, billion. And they, they talk about the U.S. oil majors considering the sale of shale gas holdings, according to the statement the company said separately and intends to exit its stake in the Kitimat liquefied natural gas project in Canada. And Chevron also plans to keep its 2020 capital budget at $20 billion in the third consecutive year. It has not boosted spending. So natural gas uh, prices really hitting that, yes. um, their, their assets, and, and as it should. You know, if, uh, if, if and, you and, have an asset and what that's based off a commodity, and that commodity price plummets, yeah. you better not be valuing that asset on your balance sheet at a price that doesn't make sense because that's a long-term problem, man. And that's really... It's cooking it, the books. Yeah, it, I was going to say, it gets into, uh, what do you call it, you know, SEC criminal behavior even at some point when you... Because you get to you get to borrow against that money, right? Oh, yeah. You get to leverage against that money, and that's where companies really go bad. When And that's why mark-to-market is so essential on most things because when you have assets on your balance sheet, you use it to further leverage yourself. Those valuations are off. That's where you really get into trouble. That's I mean, a, that's where that home crisis was in 2008. You had all these assets on total, people's books that yeah. were just hogwash. Right. How about oil? Look at that right. move. Down a dollar on those big, uh, on the surplus. Stay right there, folks. Think of swims coming up next. And I'm Amistad Bowles, the tap and Steve Rhodes. Dave right? Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Bam! Look at him, folks.